Okay, good morning everybody. We're going to start our webinar in one minute. All right, looks like we have a few um, few attendees, so I guess we'll get this started. Um, I wanted to welcome everyone this morning. Uh, thank you for joining us today uh, for the second of two informational webinars on the Ocean Protection Council Once Through Cooling Interim Mitigation Program Award Guidelines. We are scheduled from 10 to 11 a.m. today. My name is Melissa Kent, and I'm a project scientist at California Ocean Science Trust in Oakland. I'll be hosting this webinar on behalf of the Ocean Protection Council, and we will be joined by Tova Handelman, Marine Protected Areas Program Manager for the Ocean Protection Council in just a moment. So the purpose of this webinar is to provide an overview of the award guidelines and to provide an opportunity for the public to ask questions and provide input. As I mentioned, this is the second of two scheduled webinars. Uh, the first was held last week, uh, Thursday, the, August 23rd. A couple notes of housekeeping. Um, this Zoom webinar is being recorded. The recording will be archived on OPC's website that you see on the slide here. Public participants are right now logged in in listen-only mode. We will be saving the questions until the end of Tova's presentation. As this is an informational webinar about the award guidelines, we will not be answering questions about specific project eligibility, but you do have the opportunity to contact Tova directly about specific projects by email, and we'll have her information uh, available at the end of her presentation. You can ask questions in two ways. You can either chat in your questions to us at any time during the webinar um, using the chat box uh, on Zoom, and we can pose those questions to the group at the end. Or you can use the raise your hand function, and we will call on you to speak. We will be able to unmute you at that time, but you may also need to unmute yourself on the line as well. Uh, make sure that you are connected to audio by pushing the icon at the lower left of the Zoom window. Uh, so that's the end of the housekeeping, and without further ado, I'll turn the webinar over to Toba. Uh, Toba, take it away. Thanks, Melissa. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for attending this webinar. My name is Tova Handelman, as Melissa mentioned. I am the Marine Protected Areas Program Manager at the Ocean Protection Council. I'm very excited to speak with you all today about our Once Through Cooling Interim Mitigation Program and the award guidelines that are now available for public comment. Uh, here's an outline of what we will be discussing today. I'll start off with a quick overview of what has occurred leading up to the creation of these award guidelines and what the competitive program is, and then we will jump into what you'll find in the award guidelines and have some time for questions and discussion at the end. I'll assume that you're all familiar with what Once Through Cooling is and its impacts, so I won't get into that now, uh, but I think it's worth reviewing how OPC has come to receive these funds to create this competitive award program. Um, in 2010, the State Water Resources Control Board established a policy to address the damaging impacts of Once Through Cooling, and that policy requires power plants to stop using Once Through Cooling technology, and until they transition to less harmful cooling systems, they are required to make mitigation payments to the state of California. The payment amount is set by the State Water Board and it's based on the power plant's annual intake volume of water until they come into compliance with the policy. The policy gives uh, direction that $5.4 million of the payments received through this program will be allocated to the Ocean Protection Can Council annually 
to support projects that increase the marine life associated with the state's marine protected areas in the geographic region of the facility. We'll get into what that means in a moment, but I just wanted to note that this amount was based on an interagency budget analysis and that was conducted by the MPA statewide leadership team and it analyzed uh, costs associated with the MPA management program that have a direct nexus with once through cooling impacts. As you see here on the chart on this slide, any remaining funds beyond the $5.4 million allocated to OPC will go to the Coastal Conservancy and that will focus on wetland restoration. As you all know, of course, wetlands are critical nursery habitats for a wide variety of species that are impacted by once through cooling. It's important to note that the funds will decrease as power plants come into compliance with the policy, of course. Um, but for the next five years or so, we anticipate that OPC will receive $5.4 million annually, and eventually we will receive less. Uh, this competitive award program is expected to end in 2029 when all power plants are required to be in compliance. So let's get into OPC's program a little more here. Uh, through discussions with the state water boards and the MPA statewide leadership team, as well as with input from many stakeholders and also with the approval from our council, OPC has developed four program priorities that guide how the $5.4 million should be spent annually to achieve the goals of the policy to increase marine life in California's MPA network. And here are those four program priorities. In order for MPAs to accrue their maximum ecological benefit, including those that offset once through cooling impacts, MPA regulations need to be enforced and ocean users need to be educated about those regulations in order to improve their compliance. Also, funding research and monitoring projects will help us understand the level to which our MPA network may be offsetting once through cooling impacts. And finally, the funds will be allocated to restoration projects to determine the level of additional mitigation needed to fully ameliorate the current level of impacts. OPC can distribute its annual funds in two ways, through the competitive award program and also through interagency contracts or other unsolicited projects as needed. All projects, whether established through the competitive program or otherwise, will be evaluated by the same criteria and they will be subject to council review and approval. Uh, a minimum of a 10 day public comment period will be made available prior to the council meeting so the public can review the recommended projects. Um, and I just wanted to highlight here that three projects have already been approved by the council and those are with the California Department of Fish and Wildlife's law enforcement division to increase enforcement efforts. Um, the Department of Parks and Recreation to improve MPA outreach and education efforts in state parks co located with MPAs and also with California Sea Grant to administer a competitive grant program for long-term MPA research and monitoring. Here's an overview of the upcoming timeline for the competitive grant program, and we'll get into this more, into more detail uh, at the end of this presentation as well. Um, as you all know, we are currently in the middle of a 30-day public comment period for the draft award guidelines, and that will close on September 14th. Um, your input on the award guidelines is a critical step in creating this program, so we definitely want to understand your needs and hear your ideas, and uh, we really appreciate the time that you're taking to provide comments and to attend this webinar as well, of course. Um, next on the timeline, we will try to address your comments as best as we can to create the final award guidelines. and. Those guidelines will be brought to the Ocean Protection Council for approval at the October 25th meeting in Santa Cruz, which is open to the public. Um, then pending council approval, of course, we will release an open call for proposals on November 1st for our first round of competitive award program. This year, a little over $7.4 million will be available to fund the projects in the four categories I mentioned earlier. Um, but moving forward, we will have uh, 5.4 million available annually. 
Um, I won't get into all of the eligibility criteria right now. Uh, you can review them in section 2.6 in the award guidelines, um, but I just will give a quick overview. All proposed projects must be consistent with the state water boards once through cooling policy, and it must fall within at least one of the four program priorities I mentioned earlier. The projects must clearly demonstrate how outcomes would increase marine life associated with MPAs in the geographic region of the facilities, and it most, must be focused within the geographic region. Um, I will get into this more in just a moment, um, but also wanted to note that projects must be ready to start work upon approval and must be completed within one to three years. Um, funds can be awarded to public agencies, including local, state, and federal, and public or private universities, nonprofit organizations, private entities, federally recognized Indian tribes, and state Indian tribes. So let's get into what the geographic region of the facility actually refers to. Um, Ocean Science Trust convened a working group of the OPC science advisory team to scientifically define the spatial extent of once through cooling impacts and to help understand what the geographic region of the facility is. The working group released their report in June and you can find it on the program's webpage on the OPC website. The report determined that because oceanographic currents connect locations both inside and outside of MPAs, the harmful effects of once through cooling actually extends 100 kilometers north and south from a power plant's intake pipe. And thus, the report defines the area impacted as the entirety of state waters, which is three nautical miles from the coastline, from San Diego to Big Sur near uh, Lucia. And that will include the waters around the Channel Islands. So to be eligible to receive funding, projects must be focused within this region. Um, if the project takes place outside of this region, like a statewide application, for example, then the applicant must demonstrate how the proposed outcomes are connected to the geographic region. Projects that are focused solely outside of the geographic region of the facility are ineligible to receive funding. Um, I'd like to note that the working group has also created a scientific framework to evaluate whether or not a restoration method is likely to increase marine life associated with MPAs. The framework includes three guiding principles, which are that the restoration method has a high likelihood of restoring the integrity of the coastal ecosystem, being su successful at a scale that can provide meaningful ecological benefits, and being self-sustaining over a long period of time with minimal maintenance. So if you would like to propose a restoration project, I strongly recommend that you review this report as you will need to demonstrate how your project addresses its recommendations. Um, and again, you can find this report on, in both the award guidelines and on the Once Through Cooling Programs webpage. Okay, so the minimum award is $300,000, um, though OPC may award smaller projects as needed. Sub awards are allowed. Um, it's highly recommended that applicants with projects under $300,000 collaborate with others to create a larger proposal and apply as a coalition with one defined administrative lead. Um, I strongly encourage that applicants discuss potential small projects with me in advance of submitting a proposal. We definitely want to hear what kinds of projects are being proposed out there, and we don't want to cut anyone out just because they're under $300,000. But I'm sure you'll all understand I'm only one person and can manage so many grants. So um, I definitely recommend that you apply together with a larger project if you have a, a project under $300,000. Um, the maximum award is $5.4 million, though it's unlikely that a single award will receive all of the funds available in a given year. Um, we definitely want to encourage a selection of diverse projects that address current needs. Um, OPC will issue solicitations annually in the fall. The solicitation will provide more details on the minimum and maximum award amounts available for each program priority. Okay, here is an overview of the application and selection process for this first round of solicitations. 
Um, as I mentioned before, the final award guidelines will be presented in, to the Ocean Protection Council for approval at the October 25th meeting. Um, and then pending council approval of the guidelines, the request for proposals will be released on November 1st. Applicants must submit a letter of intent before they are invited to submit a full proposal. Um, the letter of intent is just supposed to be an outline of the proposed project. Um, it should be no more than two pages of text and um, it can have one table for a budget and one table for the timeline. Um, if any permits are required for the work done in the projects, then applicants will have to provide proof that they have obtained these permits as well. Um, because this is our first year rolling out this competitive award program, the letter of intent is designed to help the applicant to see if their projects are even eligible, um, you know, to see if the project is included in the geographic region of the facility or if it meets the program priorities. So we're hoping that this letter of intent will be helpful so that the applicant won't have to go through a full proposal process just to find out that their projects aren't el eligible to receive the funds. Um, <clears throat> then next what will happen is that OPC staff will review the letters of intent to check that the proposed projects do meet these eligibility requirements. And within 30 days of the submission deadline, um, the applicants will hear from me whether or not they are invited to submit a full proposal. Um, just want to note that it's possible that applicants may be asked to amend part of their proposal in order to submit a, pro a full proposal. Uh, then the applicants, uh, once they're invited to submit a full proposal, uh, they will submit that with a detailed scope of work, um, a schedule and a budget, et cetera, and that will be due on February 1st, 2019. Then selected, select proposals will be brought to the Ocean Protection Council for their approval at the May 15th, 2019 meeting. And then the approved projects will finalize their work plans and financial paperwork with me. And uh, that will take place in the summer of 2019 and work can begin once that's completed. So that was just a brief overview. Um, you can send your comments on the award guidelines to my email address, which is listed on the screen now. Uh, please make sure to submit your comments by 5 p.m. on September 14th. And with that, I just wanna say thanks to everyone for joining the webinar today. I'm looking forward to hearing your questions and comments now, and want to say thanks to Ocean Science Trust as well to help facilitating this webinar. That's great, thank you for all that information, um, Tova. And yes, uh, as Tova said, um, we'd like to open it up now for any questions. And a reminder, you can uh, submit your questions in two ways, um, into the chat box, and we will go ahead and share that with uh, the whole group. Or if you'd like to use the raise your hand function, we can go ahead and um, uh, allow your, allow, I hate to say allow you to speak, but allow you to speak through this platform. So um, any questions, go ahead and, uh, Fire away. Um, let's see, we've got one from uh, Jennifer Maddox, and it says, uh, do you anticipate that applicants or proponents will be able to get their CEQA and permits together in less than a year? Um, that's a great question. Um, so these funds will be available to projects that already have their uh, CEQA and other permits required um, in place. So if they do not have them in place, then they unfortunately will not be eligible to receive these funds. So during that letter of intent um, se section of the timeline, um, the applicants will have to show proof that they do have um, their permits. And just, just as a reminder, um, these award guidelines are in draft form right now. So if that is something that you'd like to make a comment on, I'd love to hear about that. Um, you can submit those comments, of course, to my email. But um, given the short time frame that these funds are available, which is one to three years, we thought that that was the reason why we um, are requiring at this time for projects to already have their permits in place, because we do know that that does take a long time of, of the project. All right, great. Thank you for that question. Um, anybody else? All 
Well, um, maybe to give folks a little more time to chat in if they're, if they're chatting in, um, I have a question for you, Tova. Um, I had the opportunity to work with you and, um, and your colleague, Cindy, uh, and the working group for the uh, science guidance, and maybe you could um, just uh, talk a little more, share a little more about how that science guidance uh, will inform the program. Yeah, thanks for that question. Yeah, um, so as I mentioned there, the um, OPC science advisory team um, created a working group to, um, you know, not only define the geographic region of the facility, but also to provide the, um, you know, three guiding principles for restoration projects. Um, so definitely, I recommend that people, especially people who are interested in um, submitting a restoration project, that they read the entirety of that um, of that report, which can be found on the program's webpage and in the award guidelines, um, because you'll you'll really need to demonstrate how your project addresses the recommendations from that report, um, and then. For projects that are for enforcement, education, or research, there are other documents in the award guidelines that um, are, you know, that the applicants are, are pointed to that they should review those documents as well, such as the MPA statewide leadership team work plan um, and the monitoring program, et cetera. So um, those, those types of projects will have to demonstrate that how their uh, projects you know, address those recommendations or fill those needs as well. Um, and all of that is, the, all those links are available in the award guidelines as well as on our website, which is on the screen. Great, thank you. Uh, anyone else? All right, well, perhaps we've um, given uh, folks things to think about uh, for this uh, for this program. And again, as Tova said, um, we have uh, more information at the OPC's website and uh, Tova's email here for any questions. And of course, public comment um, is welcome through. Again, what was the end date of that, Tova? Yeah, they need to be submitted to my email, which is on the screen, um, by 5 p.m. on September 14th. All right, great. Well, thank you so much for all that information, Toba, and thank you for everyone for uh, joining us for this uh, webinar today, and I hope you have, everyone has a lovely, uh, lovely morning. Thank you. Thanks.